Namaste. So now we'll continue on with verses 19 and 20 of Vichara Sangraham by Ramana Maharshi. Devotee, although I have listened to the explanation of the characteristics of enquiry in such great detail, my mind has not gained even a little peace. What is the reason for this? Maharshi, the reason is the absence of strength or one-pointedness of the mind. Devotee, what is the reason for the absence of mental strength? Maharshi, the means that make one qualified for enquiry are meditation, yoga, etc. One should gain proficiency in these through graded practice and thus secure a stream of mental modes that is natural and helpful. When the mind that has in this manner become ripe listens to the present inquiry, it will at once realize its true nature, which is the self, and remain in perfect peace without deviating from that state. To a mind which has not become ripe, immediate realization and peace are hard to gain through listening to inquiry. Yet, if one practices the means for mind control for some time, peace of mind can be obtained eventually. So when I read this, the first thing I thought of was our audience. <laughs> I remember one time, just after I retired from business, I took a nice long camping trip to Kauai, one of the islands of Hawaii. And I was camped near a beautiful beach. And just chanting my mantra, you know, many, many times a day, like that. And I met one young fellow, and he asked me, what am I up to? I said, well, I'm here, I'm chanting my mantra. And he said, oh yeah, I did that. I chanted for 15 minutes and nothing happened. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, of course nothing happened because he did not practice the prerequisites. So I'm going to post the new version of our good old chart here. And you can see that before you get to meditation, even before you get to bhakti, there's karma yoga. Karma yoga is the prerequisite for all the others. It's the foundation. You can't omit the foundation and try to build a build. It will fall over. In the same way, you cannot try to jump up to meditation or even bhakti without a firm foundation in karma yoga. And what is karma yoga? Following scriptural rules and regulations. Nobody likes to do this. But if you don't, you can never get traction in the higher stages of yoga. So that's the same fix that this fellow who's asking Ramana Maharshi is in. He hears the description of vichara, of inquiry into the self, but he cannot perform it. He can't do it because his mind is not at peace. His mind is not at peace because he does not have a sufficient stock of good karma. And he does not have enough good karma because he has not followed the rules and regulations of the scriptures. 
It's that simple. But, you know, good advice that falls on deaf ears is seldom followed. So if you come here looking for entertainment or a quick fix, or you have this idea that somebody is going to zap you and boom, you're going to be enlightened, <laughs> ain't going to happen. I mean, somebody might go through the motions, put on a good act, you know, wear the colorful robes and the big turban, you know, and come out and lay their hands ceremoniously on your forehead with many mantras and chants and candles burning in the background and whatever. And you may get some uh, tingle through auto-suggestion, but that will soon fade and you'll be right back where you started. So, to really get out of the suffering of material life, you have to follow the step-by-step -step procedure given in the scriptures. There is no shortcut. And this is not just me saying it. This is Ramana Maharshi saying it. And actually, all the great realized sages say the same thing. You have to live a pure, pious, and holy life for some time, he says. Some time <laughs> could be lifetimes for those of us carrying a heavy load of bad karma. But for those who are ripe, tivra, tivra adhikari, Ramana calls it in the Guru Vachana Kovai. That if you have a mind which is at peace, which is receptive, which is already analytical, which is already capable of contemplation, then these seeds will fall on fertile ground. See, otherwise, if you're a, just a typical denizen of Kali Yuga, <laughs> especially in the West, <laughs> it's like the seeds falling on the rocks and hard places and amongst the thorns and like that. They can never grow. They don't have the conditions to grow. So, you have to take the teaching that addresses the stage where you are at. And, in fact, we see even great sages like Ramana Maharshi never gave up karma yoga. Every day he would go in the kitchen and help cook the offering to the devotees. Every day he would supervise the construction and sometimes join in and help himself. See, he was willing to work for the cause of the benefit of all. And so should we. That's why I do these videos. This is my karma yoga. Huh? I also, you know, distribute food to the sages, the, the sadhus in Tiruvannamalai and stuff like that. And when I'm in Sri Lanka, I distribute food to the monks. But that's something that's conditional upon somebody else. See, if those sadhus and monks weren't there, then who would I feed? Well, I could feed anybody, the poor people on the street or dogs or anybody. <laughs> but the best thing to do is to feed the sadhus. The best thing to do is to study the ancient books. Don't just watch this video. Download the Vichara Sangraham and read it. Study it. Download the Guru Vachaka Kovai and study it. 
and all of Ramana's books and all the great scriptures, they're all saying the same thing. Uh -huh. One time Ramana was asked, <laughs> should we read broadly many different scriptures? And he said, look, if you need a shave and you look in the mirror, uh, the, every mirror is going to tell you the same thing. You need a shave. It's you. It's not the mirror. So in the same way, every scripture is going to tell you, live a good life, be a pious person, do good acts, get rid of your sinful activities, get serious, study, chant, worship. Then the urge to meditate will arise spontaneously of its own accord. You will not have to uh, do it as a discipline. You know, I always have to laugh when people join these meditation retreats and they go off for a weekend or a week or two and all sit in a group. Huh? And you can see the photos of them all lined up in the temple. <laughs> No, this is not the way to do it. The way to do it is, as described in every single scripture I've ever read, go to a lonely place, a quiet place where you will not be disturbed, where you have privacy, not in a group, not in a class, not on some special retreat. This is your life. This is how you live. Sit down under a tree or in an abandoned house or in a field on a river bank, on a mountain, any place that gives the required privacy. And you look into yourself. And of course, the scriptures are there and they give extensive records of what others have found when they looked into themselves, when they did the Atma Vichara self-inquiry. But that doesn't mean that's what we're going to find. <laughs> we're going to find what's unique to our own self. Every seeker has a unique psychological environment shaped by their particular experiences. And these are the things you have to work on not what somebody else worked on in the past, because that may or may not work for you. Probably not, actually. <laughs> Until you reach the higher levels, then everything gets more uh, standard and uniform, because very few people have reached those higher levels. But in the beginning, you're going to have to deal with your individual case, uh, the reasons why you are pursuing individuality and pleasure in the world and why you are attached to possessions and which possessions you're attached to and why. You're going to have to look into it all. And you're going to have to come to the conclusion all on your own that I don't need any of this stuff. I could walk away from it all tomorrow. Or what about today? Give it all up. Get on a plane. Go to the other side of the planet. Live in a cave. See, this is the real attitude, not that you're necessarily going to live in a cave, you know, but to have the attitude that I could do this. I don't need this stuff. This is not me. This is not mine. This is not myself. See, then what is yourself? What is the self? And all the seekers and sages down throughout history give the same answer. The self is Brahman, 
a space of awareness. Not even consciousness, because consciousness always has an object. But pure awareness. And this is the pinnacle of self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.